Hey, motocross fans, Larry Huffman here. Get ready, get set, get tight your seat, because we're going to replace your head with your feet. It's motocross racing with a twist and a turn. Call it wild, call it crazy, call it crash and burn. It's Moto Video's crash and burn video. Now available through this exclusive television offer. Right now, just dial the number at the bottom of the screen for this once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. It's the greatest motocross bloops, bleeps, and blunders ever assembled on home video. Now you can watch over and over again the most outrageous collection of motocross video footage ever assembled just by calling toll-free. That's right, it's Crash and Burn, the music video. Available now for the all-time low price of only $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. Wow! Only $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling. To order, call toll-free 1-800-688-MOTO or 1-800-688-6686. All major credit cards accepted. No CODs, please. Call the number at the bottom of the screen now or send checks and money orders to Moto Video, P.O. Box 501, South Laguna, California, 92677. Remember, this video is not available in stores and has never been advertised on TV before. We'll give you that address again, so get that pen and paper ready. In this video, you'll see crashes that your family and friends won't believe. In fact, this tape is that perfect gift for Dad, too. Order now by using your American Express Visa MasterCard or Discover Card and call toll-free 1-800-688-MOTO now. To order by mail, send check or money order for $19.95 plus $4 shipping and handling to Moto Video, P.O. Box 501, South Laguna, California, 92677. That's P.O. Box 501, South Laguna, California, 92677. Order your crash and burn video now. Good evening, I'm Dan Scahill. For the next 30 minutes, we'll take an in-depth look at the sport of motocross, a stadium motocross. We'll be speaking with a professional motocross racer, Marty Smith from Team Honda, and we'll also take a look at some exciting footage of the only Super Bowl of motocross from this past July at the L.A. Coliseum. Matter of fact, it was the first chance I had to see a motocross race was two years ago. I got a chance to see this sport, and before we go any further, let's take a look and see what this motocross is all about. This is the Los Angeles Coliseum, as you've known it since it was built back in 1932. Through that peristyle have passed some of contemporary sports' greatest heroes. But the Coliseum is undergoing a transformation to motorized athletics. Over 4,000 cubic yards of dirt has been molded into a 13-turn, three-quarter of a mile course. That peristyle itself will become a launching pad off which the very greatest motocross riders in the world will fly to the floor of the arena. And here is the finished product, perhaps the most spectacular artificial course in this sport's 32-year history. At the start line, for the first of three motos to decide the Super Bowl of motocross, the publisher of Cycle World magazine, Joe Parkers. This is the starting line of the first 250 International Motocross since the Super Bowl of Motocross 1975. Motocross over here in America is going to be very competitive. There are a lot of very good young riders coming up like Marty Smith, Jimmy Allen, Jimmy Pomeroy, Brad Leckie. And I really think uh, the Americans are going to be the next uh, world champions for sure. The riders are lined up in front of a mechanical starting gate. This gate is tripped by the man at the right hand here with a lever. There's a lot of good riders out there, the best in the world, and uh, it's, a tough, it's, a, it's a tough race. If I get a good start, I might do all right, but I'm just not going to, I just don't want to get hurt. I'm just going to take it easy. The best one out of here is the guy who gets the best hole shot. They're getting ready. They're all watching this man's hand who is right here on my right. It's going to go. off to a beautiful start they to Spain. Down into the first turn goes Marty. Oh, Smith has crashed. A vicious end-over-end -end crash for the leader, Marty Smith, who just a moment ago, Ken, said he was going to take it easy. Hate to see if he'd really turned it on out there. He's up and seems okay. Appropriating first place and nearly down is Rex Staten. Staten from Montana, California, went all the way down to one knee. 50,000 people go crazy as Rocket Rex moves out into the lead. Second is the charging Czechoslovakian Zdenek Belki. Third, the four-time world champ, Roger DeCosta of Belgium. Meanwhile, Joe Parker is standing by on the floor of the Coliseum with Marty Smith. Marty, can you tell me what happened? Well, I forgot about the change of first turn location. And uh, some 
Bats right there. Couldn't stop. You going to be all right for the next moto? Yeah, I think so. We'll take a look at some more footage of the Ole Super Bowl of motocross and talk with professional rider Marty Smith right after this. If you like motorcycle racing, you'll want to get the full story every week in Cycle News, America's weekly motorcycle newspaper. Call now and have Cycle News mailed to your home every week with this special television offer. Subscribe for one year and get 50 weekly issues for only $33. Use your credit card or just say, bill me, and make three easy payments of $11. Call toll-free 1-800-325-2925. Subscribe to Cycle News and just say, bill me. 29-year-old Guy Cooper. Clearly no match for today's hot young riders. Yeah, right. His bike, a Suzuki RM125. Nah. See Burt's the Motorcycle Mall. Is this a Suzuki of Norco, Orange County, Suzuki, Costa Mesa, Cole Brothers Incorporated, North Hollywood, The Performance, Del Amo, Suzuki, Redondo Beach, La Habra, Suzuki, and Fun Bike Center, San... What do you call a car that's fast as 0 to 60 than a Corvette L98 and a Nissan Z? Out corners, a Lotus Esprit has been called the affordable Ferrari by Motor Trend magazine and is the most technologically advanced production sports car on the road. You call it the Dodge Stealth RT Turbo. Choose from four Stealth models, one starting at 17246. Only at your Dodge dealer. Welcome home, America. Here at the Mountain Greenery Drug and Alcohol Treatment Center, we offer the finest in recovery services. Complete with horseback riding, a duck pond. All in a trap. Just what I need, a duck pond. When recovery programs talk about everything but how they help, something's wrong. Call Care Unit. What we offer is a personalized recovery program that works for your job, your finances, and your life. Motorcycling is very popular with over 10 million individuals in this country. Oh, there's probably 30,000 or 30 million interested people in the sport of motorcycling. Bankers, lawyers, students, everybody inv is involved in motocross or motorcycling. So much, in fact, it's quite possibly more popular than golf. The largest aspect of motorcycling is motocross. Motocross has grown to a household word since its U.S. introduction in 1969. There are probably already 8,000 events in the U.S. each year. This explosion is fueled by sales of motorcycles to riders 6 to 60 years of age, motocross replica bicycles, high school motocross teams, and even the comic strip Peanuts in a TV show. Motocross racing spawned more than 40 years ago in Europe. It's a kidney-jarring, bone-rattling blend of man, machine, and terrain, the rougher the better. Riders race specially constructed, high-powered, lightweight motorcycles costing up to $30,000 to finish first on a one-mile dirt mark course, usually somewhat kidney-shaped. They blast from a mechanical starting gate to negotiate narrow corners, roller coaster hills, savage ruts, blinding mud pits. They go around and around for 30 minutes non-stop, and then they go out and do it twice more, just to compete one vent. The overall highest finisher is the winner, and he also has the pains and bruises to prove it. Motocross is second only to soccer, and it's the physical demands. Football trails in at eighth. In pro football, a top football player might go 14 minutes a game. In the same period, a motocross racer endures one and a half hours on his mechanized bucking bronco and up to 90 miles an hour. Motocross is truly the sport of its times. Such popularity, it may even overtake rock concerts. Behind all of this is the Super Bowl of motocross, a phenomenal race where aggressive promoter Mike Goodwin moved a throwing sport into the comfortable spectator availability of the L.A. Coliseum. In 1972, the sport has skyrocketed since. The Super Bowl of motocross is the largest, most prestigious, talented race that takes place in the United States. The race is on a demanding $100,000 artificial course built annually on the floor of the Los Angeles Coliseum or the Anaheim Stadium, where the next major event is taking place. Athletes comparable to Stewart, Newcomb, and uh, other such riders compete in a quest to capture the champagne glory and gold of the spectators. Motocross often outdraws the Dodger games. Now let's return and take a look at some of our footage here. The only Super Bowl of motocross. With me now is professional motocross rider Marty Smith. He's 19 years of age and rides for Team Honda. Marty, earlier we were taking a look at some footage and you took a nasty spill. 
is this type of racing or this type of accidents or this type of uh, activity take place in stadium races? Well, uh, if you're a professional, you're out on the track, you're doing what you know how to do best. Uh, sometimes you have a slip up and you can crash. Uh, it does happen, but if you're a novice, you know, that's what you're out there for. You're out there to learn, and it does happen. I see. I noticed that with just the speed and the riding and this gear that you have on, can, can you tell us some of this gear that you have on? What is this purpose does it serve? Okay, we have the helmet here. Uh, it's good for a hard impact if you, uh, when you crash, you know, you hit your head. Uh, the goggles, they're, uh, they're, they're good for rocks that are flying out from the rear tire of somebody. Usually have a mouth guard here, which protects your mouth or your nose. Mm -hmm. You have a uh, pair of shoulder pads. Uh, it's good if you crash, if you go through a fence. And you have a chest protector. It's built in, usually, for uh, also rocks coming from the rear tire when you're following somebody. I notice you have a, this is a kidney belt. This is something that joins the leathers together. What does this do here? Well, this is, uh, see, motocross is very, uh, it's very jarring for your insides. Uh, this kidney belt kind of like, uh, it holds your insides together, keeps them in place. <laughs> uh, we got the leathers there. Uh, they got knee cups in there. Uh, they got padded right here. They're also good. It's all, it's all for if you crash, you know, it's in, you know, if you bump into somebody or something like that. With all this gear on here, you have more gear on than a professional ice hockey player, right? Yeah, uh, you've got to do it. This is a professional sport, and your life is in danger, and you've got to be protected. Let me ask you, speaking about football and ice hockey and all these things, this gear that you have on here, obviously you've got to be in fit. You're an athlete. What do you do to practice daily? What's your routine to maintain your shape for winning? Uh... I like to uh, get out about three or four days a week on my bike and get some good practice in, maybe three hours a day or something like that. I run, maybe uh, I'd like to get out to run three or four days a week. Uh, you know, just keeping in shape. I have a, you know, I don't watch my diet too well, but I don't eat junk food either. I see. What does Marty Smith, the professional racer, do in his own time? Uh, he doesn't have a lot of that, uh, but when he does, he likes to go camping, I guess you might say, maybe. You're the youngest racer in this industry, 19 years of age, Team Honda, professional rider, you ride around the country. You are, if I'm not mistaken, the highest point-winning national number one plate rider, are you not? Yeah, I guess so, that's true. How many races did you ride this year? Oh, I think I rode maybe, uh, maybe close to 47 races, maybe, 40. 47 races, 19 years of age, riding for Honda and working your way around the country. I'm curious, we're getting back to the part of being a pro rider. Are you not possibly one of the youngest riders in this country, motocross? Most people would think, excuse me, for most people would think that a, a rider would be a little bit older, a little bit younger. Well, if you start out young, you can, you know, you get the knack of it, you know what I mean? You know, if it's anything, if you start young, you'll be better at it, and I'm, I'm trying anyway. Okay. I guess I am one of the youngest. We saw you take a spill at the Super Bowl of motocross, and I think we'll probably be looking at some more film of the Super Bowl of motocross. And Marty will be mentioning about the Anaheim track that will be coming up, an incredible $100,000 Grand Prix-style course. And we'll have more on Marty and some more Super Bowl footage right after this. Okay, motocross fans, get out your pen and paper, because here's a motocross video that will blow you away. This is Larry Huffman, and this guy is Jeff the Chicken Mikasevich, number one in the 1990 Supercross point standings this week. Jeff wants you to have a copy of his outrageous video called the Mataz Attack Video, I Know Chicken, through this exclusive TV offer. In this 60-minute video, Jeff takes you on a personal tour of the Kawasaki Supercross test track and shows you how to ride motocross like a pro. This special video includes tips on starts, turns, berms, and jumps, and features a secret inside look at how to use play riding as a primary source for improving your motocross skill. Would you like to learn how to ride motocross? Do you ride motocross now? Do you like outrageous motocross jumps? This is your only opportunity to order the Mataz Attack video, I Know Chicken, because this tape is not available in stores and will never be shown on TV. You can order now by using any major credit card, just by calling toll-free 1-800-688-MOTO, or order by mail by sending only $29.95 plus $4 shipping. Order right now, and you'll receive your copy of the Mataz Attack video, I Know Chicken, Jeff's personal autograph on the tape cover, and a free motocross action trading card. To order by credit card, call toll-free 1-800-688-MOTO. order by Mail. Send checks or money orders to Moto Video, P.O. Box 501, South Laguna, California, 92677. That's Moto Video, P.O. Box 501, South Laguna, California, 92677. This video is only $29.95 plus $4 shipping. Handling. No seal of free. Call now. Receive the video, the autograph, and a free trading card for one low price. 
possibly the most exciting part of the race is the last part of the race, the third moto. Let's take a look at that third moto at the only Super Bowl of motocross, the L.A. Coliseum. We roll the film. These are the leaders. Jimmy Weinert is third. Jim Ellis is second. And Belke is the leader. They're getting ready now. Watch very carefully because the riders, every one of them is going to make the same kind of start. They're all staying back at least five, six feet from the start, and there they go. A beautiful start, and there's a new development. Mike Runyard has gone out in front as he exploded out of the gate. He's a teammate of Jimmy Ellis, and that's a factor because Ellis is right there in third spot behind number 21, Pierre Carsmakers. Buried back in the pack is the race leader, Zdenek Belke, number 77. Tony DiStefano rides in fourth spot on number three. Here's DiStefano cutting down to the inside. Runyard is your leader, but DiStefano shoots up into second place on machine number three, making two passes in that corner. So your leader, as they come over that big jump, is Mike Runyard. Here comes second place, Tony DiStefano. Third is Jimmy Ellis on the outside, trying to get up into the lead on his Can-Am. The race moving down that back stretch and over the big jump as the back markers try to make up ground. Here's the Stefano challenging on Mike Runyard, bike number 36, trying to get to the inside. There's Ellis on machine number seven. It's tight traffic through that twisting infield turn up and over the hoop de doo And here's the Stefano out of shape, somersaulting over the handlebars. The second place rider has crashed. The Stefano tries to regain his feet, but his hopes in the Super Bowl bite the dust here. What a bad break for this 19-year-old Pennsylvania campaigner. That's going to put those two Can-Am stars first and second as the crowd cheers them on. It's the black and white of the Canadian manufacturer running in first and second spot. Mike Runyard, the leader, and Jimmy Ellis is your second place campaigner right now. Remember, Ellis has to win this third and final moto to win the lion's share of $30,000. Delkey has only to finish second in this third and final moto to win the Super Bowl of motocross. Here comes Ellis making his charge to the outside around Runyard. They come down to that big leap at the start-finish line, and Ellis vaults into the lead. This entire song comes to its feet, and cheer number seven, Jimmy Ellis on as he leads in the Super Bowl of motocross. This young 19-year-old who exploded out of the New England scene two years ago is one of the emerging superstars. His pit crew, dad, mom, his young bride, and the family's pet skunk. He's three for three in stadium races this year, and we ask him if that gives him a psychological advantage. I probably have a little advantage over everybody else because I did win those other three races, and I'm hoping to do real good in this race. We have a lot of competition out here today. With tremendous confidence, jumping about 25 rows, the Los Angeles Coliseum, Jimmy Ellis reigns supreme here in round number three with an eight-second advantage over second place. Oh, he's in trouble, Ken. He's off the racetrack. Ellis hit that whoop de doo and got out of control, and here comes the field bearing down on him as he struggles to get back underway. That margin is trimmed down to just a couple of seconds as Mike Runyard is right there in second spot, and Zdenek Belke has now charged up into fourth. It's an all-new ball game for Jimmy Ellis, the race leader at this point as Belke is knocking at the door back there. There's Belke, number 77, and he's challenging for third with Rich Thorwaldson. Here comes your leader, Jimmy Ellis, but there's lots and lots of action right behind him as Belke tries to close in on third spot. Belke, number 77, he goes to the inside on Thorwalds, and Belke is there. Belke's got third place right behind Mike Runyard, the teammate of the leader, Jimmy Ellis, as they go up and over the jump. Ellis is first. Runyard is in second place. They are teammates. What about it, Davis Bain? Will Runyard block for the leader, Ellis? You can bet that Jimmy Ellis is hoping so. Runyard is going to have to do something to keep Belke behind him and out of second spot. The leader, Ellis, two-second advantage over his teammate, Mike Runyard, who crashes. Runyard is slammed into the wall of the peristyle. Belke has moved into second position in the Super Bowl of motocross. Here comes another challenger right behind him, too. It's number two, Jim Weinert. Weinert knights to the inside and takes over third. And now he has only Zdenek Belke ahead of him as he's trying to challenge for second. Belke can win it all right here. All he has to do is stay up behind this number seven. That's Belke, number 77. All he has to do is stay on two wheels, and he will win win the Super Bowl of motocross with a second place finish in the third moto. So Jimmy Ellis is no longer the master of his own fate. He is the leader in the race, but that's not going to guarantee him the victory. Here comes your leader, Ellis. Belke is in second place, and now Weinert becomes the ally of Jimmy Ellis. He's got to get around Belke and take over second spot to ensure the victory for the Can-Am rider. Belke won the first moto. Ellis won the second. This is the showdown. And they come around here is 
is Zdenek Belki, number 77. He's feeling that pressure from Jim Weiner. Weiner is definitely closing on machine number two. Around through the whoop dee doo jumps they come with Jim Weiner trying valiantly to reel in the charging Czechoslovakian Zdenek Belki. There's the leader, Ellis, still in front, and Belki is nibbling away at his lead as they go up into the peristyle. It looks like that battle for second place is drawing them closer and closer to the leader. There's your second place battle going up and out of sight right now. 50,000 people waiting for this leap, and here it is. Really heaving that bike forward. Jimmy Ellis trying to get an advantage over the second place rider, and Ryder is down in the peristyle. That's fourth place Pierre Karsbaker, who is sidelined. The riders go streaking by as he tries to get back into it. In the three decades of motocross, there has never been an event such as this throng of 50,000 is seen here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. As we move to the final moments, we have three riders within one second of each other, no interval whatsoever. There they are, Dave Spain, to decide it all here in the Super Bowl. Belke trying to protect that crucial second position from the onslaught of Weiner, cuts down to the inside. Oh, he's in trouble on the whoop de doo Belke has crashed. Belke crashes through that whoop de doo series trying to get that bike back on his feet as the crowd comes to life, sensing the victory. Here it is again. Here's Belky down on the inside. You see the front wheel get out of shape. He falls off and almost appears to be trying to tackle Wider as he senses victory escaping his grasp. Zedetic Belky has crashed. Jimmy Ellis leads. Reiner is second. And Thorwalds runs in third spot. An interesting development here. Weiner stands a very good chance of winning the Super Bowl of Motocross. It's been havoc with the leaders all through the event. And should Ellis have trouble, Weiner can take the whole thing home. That's right, Ken. If Weiner can get by Ellis, they end up tied on total points for the event, and Weiner wins the Super Bowl of Motocross on the basis of the best finish in this final moto. There's the separation from first to second. Belke is up after his crash and is running fifth. Back to the peristyle go the leaders. Ellis, number seven in command. He just seems to get more and more confidence as this event continues. He's got perfect lines. Oh, Belke is down. Belke has crashed again, probably on the effects of that first impact. He's shaken by it. He's out of the picture now, Ken. There's no doubt about that. It's amazing the beating these athletes take in this sport. Well, it's the second most physically demanding sport in the world. Ken, behind professional soccer, American professional football, interestingly enough, ranks in eighth position in that medical survey. Jimmy Ellis of Cobalt, Connecticut, seems to be on his way to victory. But every time we've had a man in front, he usually has gone down throughout these previous two motos, and including this event. Some of the leaders have had real problems. And this guy right here, Jim Weiner, has the ability to do it all. He's a 500cc national champion. He could reel in Ellis on this course and take that victory away from him in the waning moments. There goes Jimmy Ellis up the peristyle and out of sight. Running in second spot is Jim Weiner. There's your third place contender. That's Rich Thorwaldson on bike number 11. The air cars makers after that crash has charged back to fourth. Jim West is in fifth and Rex Staten is now in sixth place on the racetrack in the third moto. The amazing story here is that Rex Staten in sixth position. Remember, he was the victim of that horrible double endo crash earlier. Here he is up and still riding in the Super Bowl of motocross, rapidly moving towards his conclusion here at the Los Angeles Coliseum. It's all over. That crowd is just going ecstatic here as they realize that a United States campaigner, either Weiner in second or Ellis in first, is going to take all the marbles in Super Bowl number four of motocross. In fact, some of that crowd in this very last lap of competition is already beginning to break across the track down here, Dave. A very dangerous situation. The fans come streaming down and across the racetrack. We've still got bikes out there at racing speed, and it's dangerous indeed. It's another obstacle on this course filled with obstacles. They're all trying to get at the winners, and the leader right now is this young man, Jimmy Ellis. Ascending to Peristyle for the final time. Ellis going for victory. All he has to do is stay up for about one-third of the course now, and it's all his. He's put Jim Weiner well back behind him, and Jimmy Ellis appears headed for the biggest motorcycling victory of his life in the Super Bowl. Listen to this thunderous crowd as Ellis moves toward victory. He works his way past some of the lap riders. You'd think the Los Angeles Rams, Dave, were on their way to a Super Bowl victory the way this crowd is responding to this young American's efforts in the Super Bowl of motocross. Jimmy Ellis now took one turn away from victory, goes wide to the outside. Here he comes over the final jump looking for the checkered flag. 
everybody's on their feet and a victory wave as he takes the checkered flag. You got it, ladies and gentlemen. The winner of the Super Bowl of Motocross is Jimmy Ellis with help from number two, Jim Weiner. That is incredible racing. We'll have more right after this. I'm Larry Huff, and over the years, I've had the privilege of announcing some of the greatest Supercross races in history. Now I'm even more privileged to offer you the greatest Supercross races ever videotaped on a home video. That's right. You'll see the greatest American Supercross stars who ever lived, like Bob Hamm, Mike Bell, Mark Bobo Barnett, and even Jeff Ward and Rick Johnson in this complete series of videotapes based on the series you've been watching on two wheels. Just call this toll-free number and order the entire 26 episodes of the On Two Wheels video collection and save $15 per tape by ordering the entire series. Call now, and you pay only $7.69 per tape, plus postage and handling. It's the greatest collection of Supercross races ever assembled on video, and it's available only on this special TV offer. If you were to purchase all 26 shows at the regularly advertised price of $25 for each tape, you'd pay $650. But call this toll-free number and get all 26 videos for only $199.95. You'll own great races like this one. And here's the start. There's Ward, number three. Here comes Cooper. There goes Johnson. And Johnson is forced out. And the question is, can Johnson or Lachine come back and even have a chance of winning this race? 20 laps through the mud, the blood, and the beer here at the L.A. Coliseum. And Johnson is starting in 17th spot. We've got a piece of meat. The checkered flag comes out. And Ricky Johnson wins the Super Bowl of Motocross. Holy Toledo. Guy Cooper, oh. incredible finish as well. Look at Johnson turns around and shakes his hand and holds it and says, you won this one too, buddy. So call toll-free and order all 26 shows from the On Two Wheels series and save over $400. These collector's tapes will be your last chance to see the history of Supercross forever. Call toll-free or send check or money order for $199.95 plus $25 postage and handling to On Two Wheels, P.O. Box 9501, South Laguna, California, 92677. All major credit cards accepted. Allow four to six weeks for delivery. No CODs accepted. Call right now and order your set of videos today. Marty, I must admit, motocross racing is incredible. You guys go and go and go and hammer yourselves out there. I'm curious, I, I believe we can get a, a shot of the rendition here of the track. Can you tell me something about this, this motocross track that's coming to Anaheim Stadium? Some of the key points that as a spectator, as a rider, what do you look for out there? Well, the start's gonna be, uh, it's gonna be a key point because there's gonna be 40 riders starting at the same time. And they all wanna get to that first turn first and not too many of them can. And, uh, the whole track, really, it's going to be really exciting for the spectators. Everybody's going to be able to see everything. Let me ask you something. Working your way around the track that we're looking at here, there's jumps, there's ruts, there's mud holes, there's all kinds of gear. Doesn't this tear a bike apart? Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's just as hard on the bike as it is on the rider. I'll be doggone. Motocross racing, stadium motocross racing, an incredible form of racing. I'll tell you what, Marty, thank you for joining us in here tonight. Joining us here tonight for this motocross little display here of stadium motocross, exactly what it's all about. My name is Dan Scahill, and this has been Stadium Motocross, The Phenomena, with Marty Smith, Team Honda. The Super Bowl of Motocross is America's most famous Supercross race. Now here's a look back to the seventh running of the L.A. Super Bowl of Motocross, 1978. Hosted by Dave Despain and field announcer John Smith. The footage was taken from the original 35mm film source. Notice the water crossing placed at one end of the racetrack. An obstacle that made these early days of Supercross racing so very challenging. It started as a fad. It became a Southern California event. And now it's the world classic of motocross. We're at the famed Los Angeles Memorial Coliseum for the seventh running of the Super Bowl of Motocross. Hi, I'm John Smith, and we're here with 70,000 fans to see the top 25 motocross riders in the world battle for a record $50,000 purse. From well, Laguna Beach, all, California, comes knowledge our knowledge defending the Super Bowl game winner, game the jammer, down, Jimmy yeah. Weiner, and he tells what it means to win. This is like the premier race in the United States, and everyone's here, all your sponsors, the, the, you, you, all the factories are here. So uh, it's just neat to win it, you know, your, your home, your families, every, everyone's just here and they go, well, if you win the Super Bowl, you're like the world champion, you know, and it's, it's really neat. It's a good feeling. A series of qualifying heat races set the field for the $50,000 20-lap championship coming up. All the AMA superstars going to the gate to try to qualify and they're off. 
as they go thundering down the straightaway and into the first turn. It took just a moment's time for Bob Hurricane Hanna, the king of this kind of racing, to jump into the lead. As he wheelied under the checkered flag, he established himself as the man to beat. Well, I like to be the guy to beat all the time, but it uh, just puts, you know, it gets your nerves up. Your heart's going wide open all the time. The time the race gets here, I'm just sacked out. The second heat race, and this one goes to a local boy, a new name, Daryl Schultz of Orangevale, California. But the big news in heat two was the broken gearbox that knocked out two-time Super Bowl winner Marty Tripes of Santee, California, and the only man to consistently battle with Hannah. Heat three, and Ellis erupts. The scoreboard tells it all as Jimmy Ellis of Cobalt, Connecticut, hurdles to victory on his Team Honda entry. He's won this race twice before and will go for another one tonight in the Super Bowl of Motocross. This man is not a motorcycle racer. He's a daredevil and the finest over Niagara Falls in a barrel tradition. He's part of the show business that has attracted a crowd of more than 70,000 people. And here is Pharrell's kite cycle. A cross between Evil Knievel and Orville Wright. He's going to try to clear that big double jump. He's up. He didn't make it. Pharrell came up short. Ooh. A hard crash. Quickly, the medical crews rush over to Bob Correll. The crews check the kite cycle. Let's take another look at what happened. There's the launch. He's up. The flash bulbs pop. Just not enough momentum. And Correll really bites the dust in the bottom of the Coliseum. But he's up and OK. Bob Correll, after his treacherous double jump, beaten but not bowed at the Los Angeles Coliseum. Meanwhile, on the starting line, two-time winner, Jimmy Ellis, Captain Cobalt of Team Honda. Bob Hanna, the superstar of Supercross motorcycle racing. Here's Marty Smith, who crashed here so hard three years ago. For all of them, the critical importance is the start of this race. Well, I have to get off the line tonight, no worse than sixth place. You've got to get off with the leaders, or you must almost forget about it. The thoughts of last year's winner, Jim Weiner, in these moments of final preparation. The mechanics must turn these machines over to the riders for the start of the Super Bowl of motocross. The green is aloft, and we're underway. A thundering herd of expensive motorcycles and talent down into turn number one. As the scramble unshuffles, it's Gary Semix, number 11, who comes out on tap. Bob Hanna is stuck in traffic way at the back of the pack. On the other side of the Coliseum, this is Insanity Ridge. It's a 60-mile-an-hour straightaway and right off a seven-foot jump. As they come around over goalpost jump, looks like, yep, Gary Simix. He's in the lead, the new rider for Team Can-Am, as he goes into that right-hand hairpin turn. Another set of whoop de doos Then you've got to line up for this water hole. 20 laps each time. You're going to have to go through that water hole, and it's going to be a swamp before this one's over. This course is an absolute demon for these riders. The water hole has been added new in 1978 to add even another dimension to the Super Bowl of motocross. Gary Semix, reputed to be one of the finest starters in the motocross business, has grabbed the early lead here in the Los Angeles Coliseum. Semix on a Can-Am machine, out front looking smooth. First trip up the peristyle. Here comes the swing around through the tunnel, and then the explosion back out into space, and the huge drop as the crowd goes crazy. Gary Semix launching himself 120 feet through the air to the floor of the L.A. Coliseum. This is the action of Supercross competition. Semix is out front, and a big surprise in the number two spot. Carlos Serrano of Tucson, Arizona, has put a privately backed Baco into second position. Rick Forget of Team Yamaha and Sandy Oregon rides third at this point. Fourth is Daryl Schultz, the heat race winner from Orangevale, California. Into the massive man-made swamp they come. That part of the course will take its toll before the night is over. See how the steam erupts off those engines. Already quite hot after only a couple of laps. Semix out front and in command. The start so important, Semix took advantage of it. Right behind him, Carlos Serrano. Five feet, eight inches tall, 155 pounds. A 21-year-old bachelor and motorcycle shop manager. And boy, could he make a name for himself here tonight. Nobody in this place has heard of Carlos Serrano, but you can become an overnight superstar in the Super Bowl of Motocross. Back through the peristyle, totally out of view of the crowd. 
And then that explosion back out into the massive throng of people. 140,000 eyes are focused on Gary Semex right now as he tries to take what would be the biggest win of his career today. Semex is smooth, and that's critically important in a form of racing where one mistake can put you on your head. And look at Bob Hanna. Bob Hanna has passed 15 riders in the first two laps. Hanna is going to be a contender before this one is all over with. California's Gary Semex out front, then Arizona's Carlos Serrano and Oregon's Rick Forget. That's your first three as they come around this $100,000 man-made course. That's how much it costs to cover up the turf on which the Los Angeles Rams play, all in the dirt, to build this racetrack to test these American Motorcyclist Association champions. Semex is one of the best, and he's really stretching out his lead down into the turn at the end of the straightaway. Oh, and we've got a rider down. That's Daryl Schultz. He was your fourth place man. Schultz has crashed. That shows how quickly this course can strike down a rider. Gary Semex is the leader. Carlos Serrano second. Rick Forget third in the Super Bowl of Motocross. Hey, motorcycle fans, I'm Larry Huffman, and I'd like to tell you about the wildest moto video ever made, the Blackwater 100 from 1990. Call toll-free right now to order this exciting home video program. Staged in Davis, West Virginia. The Black...
here at the Super Bowl. He's riding a smart, smooth, even-keeled race, keeping up with the leaders, but trying to avoid trouble. It's a family affair with Jimmy. They travel with him. His dad's his mechanic all year long on the circuit. Jimmy also keeps himself in top physical condition, which is a must to be a champion in this ground-pounding sport. Physical demands indeed. A Swedish medical survey proves that motocross is the second most physically demanding sport in the world. Only professional soccer, interestingly enough, places a greater physical demand on the participant. And for comparison purposes, the L.A. Rams and pro football rank eight in that same survey. Here's Gary Semix combining physical, mental, and mechanical perfection at this point in the Super Bowl of motocross. Miss a beat on any of those three departments, and the cost in terms of finish position here will be measured in the thousands of dollars. Out onto the front straightaway they go. Mike Bell hits Insanity Ridge, then a lap rider directly in front of Jimmy Ellis while that rider wisely moves over as the train comes rumbling through. Ellis running third, chasing Bell. And now here comes Bob Hanna up on the outside trying to make his move. Bell, Ellis, and Hanna. And they are close as they slog through the mud, hit down the backstretch. Gary Semix leading but barely. There's a full-scale war for second place in the Super Bowl of motocross. If you like motorcycle racing, you'll want to get the full story every week in Cycle News, America's weekly motorcycle newspaper. Call now and have Cycle News mailed to your home every week with this special television offer. Subscribe for one year and get 50 weekly issues for only $33. Use your credit card or just say, bill me, and make three easy payments of $11. Call toll-free 1-800-325-2925. Subscribe to Cycle News and just say, bill me. 29-year-old Guy Cooper. Clearly no match for today's hot young riders. Yeah, right. His bike, a Suzuki RM125. Nah. See Saddleback Suzuki Laguna Hills Inland Empire. Bernardino Simi Valley Cycles, Escondido Cycle Center, Anaheim Suzuki, Southland Cycle Center, Garden Grove, and Suzuki Riverside. hearing impaired, these are only abstract words. Taft Hearing Impaired School adds meaning to these children's lives. Toward that goal, Auto Trader Magazines will sponsor a benefit golf tournament on October 16th at the Tustin Ranch Golf Club. Come join us. To play or to make a donation, call 261-1150, extension 3019. Everybody's got one, and you can use yours to win a brand-new 1992 Pontiac Grand Am, plus Hawaiian vacations, thousands in cash, and more. The Orange County Zip Code Game. All you need to know to win these great prizes is your zip code, and the number is 95.9. That's the station with the hits of the 80s and 90s, and no rap. Specializing in Orange County traffic and what's happening in Orange County. And now, the Orange County Zip Code Game. It's a zip to win. Tune in now to find out more. 95.9 KEZY. Trying to lock up the championship in the 1978 renewal of this kind of racing. He goes to the outside. Hannah has the line. Hannah has taken over third place. Bob Hannah moves around Jimmy Ellis. And with that pass, Hannah has the potential to reign as the 1978 Toyota Supercross champion after tonight's racing. He has enough points here tonight to win the title in the series that stops at places like the King Dome, the Astro Dome, the Silver Dome, the Super Dome, and right here at the Granddaddy, where it all started, the Los Angeles Coliseum. Bob Hanna in third spot with enough points to clinch the series title if he can just keep that motorcycle up on two wheels for a few more laps. Up front, it's showdown time between number 11, Gary Semix, and number 39, Mike Bell. Bob Hanna is right there along with Jimmy Ellis to make it a four-man question mark as to who will win the 1978 Super Bowl of motocross. Semix and Bell, wheel to wheel, Hanna right on their tail as they hit the chute. Gary Semix and Mike Bell. Semix has led it throughout. Bell has had an up and down journey to this classic confrontation as we move down toward the finish. Semix trying to find the right line. Bell waiting for 
that momentary lapse of concentration, that tiny mistake that can mean victory in the Super Bowl. They disappear from the crowd's view back into the peristyle section. Now that long leap to the floor of the stadium. Up and over the jump, and Bell is making a charge. Mike Bell will try the low line. Bell is inside. Bell has taken the lead. Mike Bell is leading the Super Bowl of motocross with Gary Semek second. In this grueling sport that puts such a tremendous premium on you, Semmings is the veteran at 24. He has given way here to Bell, the precocious newcomer who is closing in on his 21st birthday and now closes in on the biggest victory of his motocross career. Semmings wants to reclaim that lead that was his for 15 of these 20 laps. Five more times around. Mike Bell, Gary Semix, and let's not forget Bob Hanna. Hanna never quit. He has clinched the 1978 Supercross Series title if he can hold his current third place running spot. But Hanna wants to go for the victory. He has won more nationals than any other rider at AMA Racing. And he wants to win the Super Bowl, a race that has thus far in his short but explosive career totally eluded him. Hannah is going after Ellis as they move to the peristyle. Here, Hannah's jumping style could prevail. 120-foot leaps to the floor of the Coliseum. No, Semek stays out front. The race for second into that tight right-hander. Hannah's alongside. Hannah has made the pass. Bob Hannah has taken over second place from Gary Semek and now goes after the leader of the Super Bowl of motocross, this man, Mike Bell, as Bell uncorks a 40-foot leap on the back stretch working down into the final dramatic moments. It appears these two teammates will settle the issue of victory. There is pandemonium in this venerable old stadium. 70,000 people on their feet because it's all come down to this. Mike Bell and Bob Hanna with just over a lap to go for victory. A tiny slip here, a momentary bobble, the slightest miscue, and victory suddenly turns to disaster. The white flag, one more lap to go. Bell sees his advantage shrink as Hanna charges on the outside. Lap traffic in front of them, slower riders looming like boulders, threatening to knock either of these contenders from their machines. Bell is by. Hanna is by the slower traffic. Now down through the swamp. Two young men at the forefront of a new generation of motocross. Bell and Hanna are riding the razor edge. All out, last ditch, winner take all. The climax of the Super Bowl. Hanna clipped the hay bale as he desperately tries to reel in Mike Bell. Here we come to the peristyle. This is where Gary Semex felt the wrath of the hurricane, Bob Hanna. The question is whether Hanna can pull it off again on this, the last lap. Back into the darkness they come. Bell winds open the throttle. The breathtaking leap to the floor of the Coliseum, and Bell is actually stretching the lead. Here's where Hanna made the Semex pass, but Bell isn't having any. Bell holding his line. Cool, calm, collected at 20 years of age, racing like a veteran. Last turn, final charge. Mike Bell takes the checkered flag. Bell has won the Super Bowl of motocross over Bob Hurricane Hanna. Those fireworks take a backseat tonight to the motocross pyrotechnics of Mike Bell. John Smith is in victory circle with our winner. Mike? Looked like a consistent race from the beginning. Did you know how close Hannah was getting to you as you went through the night? All I was getting was the signals from my mechanic, and I just didn't want him to get any smaller. Did you feel you had a one? I, I didn't even, I don't even know I still won. I mean, I didn't know I won until right then, when I got the checkered flag. I didn't know. Any problems in the race? No, just a little tangled up with some lap riders and stuff like that, but. Well, it was a super ride the whole night. Congratulations. Mike Bell, the winner, Bob Hanna finishing second, Jimmy Ellis was third, the early leader Gary Semex fourth, and fifth was Kent Howerton. Hey, Supercross fans, check this out. It's high-flying motocross pro-action trading cards for 1991. Now you can own this brand new set of limited edition motocross action trading cards from 1991. Call this toll-free number now and order the complete set of 150 full-color motocross cards. Already valued as a limited edition collector set, these cards include top motocross stars like Jean-Michel Bale, Jeff Stanton, Jeff Ward, and many, many more. And just check out the colorful graphic design front 
and back. Wow, get your set now. To order your complete set of 150 cards via this exclusive TV offer, use any major credit card and call toll-free 1-800-688-6686 or mail check or money order for $37.50 plus $4 postage and handling to Moto Video Card Offer, P.O. Box 9501, South Laguna, California, 92677. That's P.O. Box 9501, South Laguna, California, 92677. Absolutely no CODs accepted. Allow four to six weeks delivery, tax not included. Order now. Think you're a true fighting Irish football fan? Not without Blue and Gold Illustrated. It's 100% Notre Dame. Thousands start every season off with a fighting Irish game plan in hand. Shouldn't you? Be part of the Notre Dame football tradition. Subscribe today. Then get this exciting chronicle recounting a decade of Notre Dame football. Or this 1991 yearbook edition. Your choice free. 20 year-round issues of Blue and Gold Illustrated are only $34.95. Call this toll-free number today. Well, we hope you thoroughly enjoyed this episode. I'm Larry Huffman, reminding you to join us again soon to trace the history of Supercross and to tell the story of those racing legends who've dedicated their lives to riding and racing on two wheels.